You just broke a string on your acoustic guitar. What do you do next? Hey, this is David Harsh with Guitar Success For You. I'm a Christian songwriter and worship leader, and I've restrung my guitar hundreds of times. Sometimes it's because I broke a string. And today, I'm gonna take you step by step through what you can do to replace that string when it happens. Now, we're all gonna break strings during our guitar journeys, but if you watch until the end of this video, I'll give you a pro tip that'll help drastically reduce the possibility of string breakage. Let's get started. Step one. Don't freak out. Now, I'm not denying the fact that when a string breaks, it can be startling. It is startling. But if we're subtle about it, and we're serving in a worship environment or a Christian concert, we can keep the focus on the Lord and allow the song set to continue with minimal interruptions. Early in my career, I was much more shaken by strings breaking, but I've gotten much better about not freaking out when it happens. Step two assemble a toolkit. The five tools you'll need are a tuner, a spare set of strings, a pencil, a cloth for cleaning the fretboard, and a tool for winding and cutting the strings. For this last tool, you could use a simple winder and then track down a pair of wire cutters or pliers, but why not combine the two? Diodario has a string winder cutter that not only has the standard machine head winder on the end, it has a cross option for two different machine head sizes. You might be like, ah, oh, that's what that's for. And of course, it has the bridge pin remover on the end. Lastly, the cutter on the end is not a sharp object like a wire cutter, but it totally works. So if you fly with it, you could probably carry it on the plane and reduce suspicious looks from the TSA when you put it in your guitar case and send it through the scanner. But usually, just in case, I'll check it in my bag. So this tool can unwind and wind the machine heads, it can remove the bridge pins, and it can cut the strings all in one. And you can get your very own Diodario string winder and cutter by following the link in the description below this video. So you've got your tools all laid out. What's the next step? Step three, open and label the strings. I love Elixir NanoWeb Mediums. Now, you might have a preferred type of string, but if you don't, try a set of these out. Again, link in the description. Elixir has chosen to label these strings 13 gauge to 56 gauge. I know these small and large numbers well, but I spend more time playing the strings than I do studying them, so the numbers in between sometimes get mixed up for me. To get around this, I lay out the strings in descending gauge order like this. This is also a good measure because sometimes the strings arrive in the package out of order. And then I label them using my pencil. You like that? I'm writing backwards just for you. Now I label this last one in a lowercase e. I'm using uppercase letters for all but the high E. Really though, it's pretty easy to discern between the two E's because they're so drastically different. The low E is thicker and it's wound, and the high E is much thinner and it's not wound. But this is an extra measure of thoroughness. Why label these strings? So I can reach for one at a glance and know exactly which one it is. This is the voice of experience. <laughs> I put a string in the wrong spot on my guitar once, I tightened it up, trimmed the end off, and I realized what I had done, but by then it was too late, so I had to discard the string. Step four, grab the packet for the string you need. Now I've got the replacement string ready, and to avoid confusion, I'll set the other strings aside. Step five, remove the broken string. This is sort of a Captain Obvious thing, but we need to remove the broken string before we can put the new one on, right? So I'll unwind the string from the spindle up here on the headstock. It comes right out without much work at all. File that fact away for later. Trust me, you'll know what I mean in a moment. Now I'll remove the bridge pin with my handy little string winder. Side note, don't lose this bridge pin. You'll need it if you want to put the next string on. Step six, 
I might use the cloth to clean the fretboard just a bit where the string was. This is something that can be used especially if you take all the strings off, which I don't recommend doing except for a short amount of time so that your truss rod isn't out of balance with no opposition from the strings. Step seven, remember the pencil? It actually serves two purposes in my opinion. I use it to create some powdered graphite lubricant in the slot of the nut where the string goes. This reduces drag. There are products out there that you can drip into the nut slot, but a pencil works just fine for me. Okay, we're halfway there. If you're getting some value from this video, we would value your willingness to provide a constructive comment, to like or share this video, and to subscribe to our channel so we can keep churning out helpful content. Thanks for considering. Step eight, grab the new string, unwind it, and place the ball end into the hole where the bridge pin was. Side note, I like to take the broken string and put it in the pack so that that can be out of the way. So I'm gonna put the ball end into the hole where the bridge pin was. Step nine, secure the string with the pin. You can lightly slide the bridge pin into the hole, but pull up on the string so it catches and doesn't have any slack. You don't wanna be surprised later by having it pop into place without warning. Okay, step 10, feed the string into the tuning post. We feed the sharp end into the post, turning the machine head if necessary, so it goes straight through. Okay. Now, if you look at the headstock, you want the strings to go up and out like a fountain. Unless you have a guitar like a Fender Acoustic where all the machine heads are on one side. You're gonna typically have the strings wind away from the center. I've seen people wind some strings backwards on the posts and then things get really creative because for some strings, they have to tune them the opposite direction from how they would normally work. Does that make sense? Step 11, give the string some slack. I like to give enough slack for the string to wind around the post about three times. So, I place my hand sideways on the neck to create this slack with the string. Step 12 is to turn the machine head to tighten the string. Now, if you've got someone nearby who can help provide an extra set of hands, great. Otherwise, you should be able to accomplish this yourself. As long as the bridge pin is seated properly, it probably won't pop up. I say probably because sometimes it does, so keep it in the corner of your eye. I anchor the string at the nut with one hand while preparing to wind the string with my other hand. The main area I focus on visually is the tuning post because I want the string to wind down from the hole like a spiral staircase. Now some people like to wind over and under the string as it emerges from the tuning post, not me. I like to keep it simple. Now, if you're looking directly at the machine head as it meets the guitar, it needs to turn counterclockwise to tighten. The first few turns I like to do by hand. I'll even let the sharp end of the string go under or next to some of the other strings to keep it in place if necessary. But once I've got it going the way I want to, I'll use my handy string winder cutter to go the rest of the way. There goes that bridge pin, see? Probably won't pop up, but it might. Now, a word of caution. You don't wanna wind a string too high above its intended pitch. So as it gets tighter, pluck it a few times. Maybe even have a tuner nearby. Where'd my tuner go? Thank you. Now, I use the Peterson Strobo Clip Tuner. Again, link in the description if you'd like to buy one of those. Okay. Looks like I need to come up to G. Now, you can use your ear to listen to the string in relation to the strings around it. So this is a G, so it's a perfect fourth, or should be, above the D. 
and it should be a major third below the B. As you can tell, these neighboring strings aren't in perfect tune because the balance of the instrument has been thrown off by the broken string, but we can fix that later. Once the new string has reached pitch, it's time for step 13. Step 13 is to stretch the string. I do this several places and several times, pushing down and up, away from the low strings and up towards them. You'll hear the string drift down in pitch because when you do this, it's basically getting stretched out. It's been resting comfortably in the packaging for who knows how long. Once it's been stretched and tuned back up, we finish with step number 14. Step 14 is to trim the excess string. I encourage you to discard this immediately. You don't want it to drop on the floor and accidentally step on it the wrong way barefoot. That could be just shy of helpful. Some people like to keep the ends long to wind them into circles or make little sculptures, but once again, in my opinion, simpler is better. Some people even tie off the string at the tuning post before cutting it, but unless it's only been wound around once, it's not going anywhere. Why am I reluctant to tie the string in a knot? Because if I need to remove and replace a string quickly, I don't want to have the hassle with untying it. I want it off my guitar right away so I can put a new string on. See what I mean about planning ahead so we don't have a lot of extra work removing the string? Okay, so we've replaced a string just like we planned to do at the beginning of this video. And if we have songs to play right away, hey that rhymes, we can get right to them. But the general wisdom, especially if you've had these strings on your guitar for a while, is to replace the remaining five strings when you have time. The new string will sound brighter than the others. So. Turn on a good movie, listen to a podcast, or go enjoy a nice view while you replace the remaining strings. Your guitar will sound much more uniform in its shimmering beauty with all the new strings on it. Inside Guitar Success For You, our one-of-a-kind membership for beginning and intermediate Christian guitarists, you get five instant bonuses when you join. And one of them is a special video called How I Restring My Guitar, where I walk you through this process for all six strings with a few extra details designed to help you make the most of this important process. See the description for how to learn more about Guitar Success For You or join, or just visit guitarsuccessforyou.com. It's pretty much the most awesome and in-depth guitar experience I've ever offered in my 30 years of teaching this amazing instrument. It's highly affordable and it has a wonderful community element with lots of guest experts who speak into the experience. All right, are you ready for the pro tip I promised you? It's this, restring your guitar consistently perhaps even more frequently than you think you might need to. I buy multiple sets of strings, keep a couple packs in my guitar case, and when I know I have a show or a studio session coming up, I restring. It's a small investment of money. Guitar strings are among some of the most inexpensive strings for instruments, and it doesn't take much time. The more you do this, the faster you'll get. It takes me about 20 minutes to restring my whole guitar. The peace of mind that comes with fresh strings on your guitar is something you can't really put a price on. It's kind of like having really good brakes on your car. I rarely snap strings because I know how long a set has been on my guitar, and I can often predict which string might be the most susceptible to breaking and when. Usually, I replace my strings well before that might happen. When you take them off, you might find that they've been dented by the frets. You'll see these little lines underneath the strings. That's usually a telltale sign that they're ready to be replaced. Sometimes they just sound dull. That's another indicator that they're worn out. <laughs> One time, I had a student bring a guitar into my studio that had strings that were so oxidized and corroded that they were completely black. I'm not kidding. So we took that first lesson to do what I just taught you, and there was a lot more joy for that student as he went on to play his guitar with new strings on it. I hope you experience the same joy going forward from today. It was my privilege to serve you through this video, and I hope to see you in the next video.